Oh man, here we go, man. I had to bring him back. He's the talk of social media as usual. He he's the algorithm king, the YouTube guy, social media guy. He didn't crack the Da Vinci Code. Charleston White, man, he's back. What's up, man? Yeah, yeah, the the, the, the new nigga kid on the comedy block. Yeah, yeah, I'm a, yeah, I'm officially uh, yeah, my career as a stand up comedian now. After all these years of working together, I've never seen so many people mad at you as they are right now. Oh, they here right now? Every interview I've done, your name comes up. Every every barbecue, Easter just passed, your name was all the old heads that during Easter uh, was bringing you up. Your name's everywhere right now. Oh, they, oh, they, oh, uh, for what? What I done done this time? Yeah, I, I mean, yeah, of, I done done so much. I mean, of course, the, the Gilly situation, man, a lot of people... You know, a lot of people love you, but it was just it was this is that one thing where people just don't agree with you. Uh well, uh they they agree with King Vaughn. They agree with Dirk. Uh I, they agree with Julio Fulio. Uh I remember I, I talked to uh Bibby's dad. Mm. Uh I've talked to Tuka's mom. Uh I man, they where well, they done FBG Duck's mama, mama duck. So why is it that they so mad about Gilly's son? And he was a grown kid, talking gangster and playing gangster. So it's only two outcomes of this life, right? So why they so mad now? When it, we watch drill music evolve and erupt, and, and if I'm not mistaken, uh, Chief Keith's new song is, is dissing Tuka. Oh, one of Chief Keith's new songs is dissing Tuka. Yep. So, yep. so here we go again. I'm making everybody look like a hypocrite, but because Gilly is one of their favorite celebrities, it's easy to feel sorry for him and be mad at me. And I'm telling everybody who's mad at me, suck my d that nigga son. Give a fuck about that nigga son. That nigga son was playing gangster. And gangsters get and go to jail. And when gangsters go to jail, I don't cry. And I don't have no respect for the dead, homie. I don't have no respect for the dead. I have respect for my neighbor. I, I honor my mother and my father. I love my brother. I pray for my enemies. That I, yeah, nah, nigga, but I don't give a damn about the dead. When I go to the graveyard, I walk on top of the tombstone. Yeah, I spit on the grave. Yeah, nigga, I don't give a damn about the dead. <laughs> yeah, I all do. I respect the living. So I'm saying to all y'all people, how can y'all have so much respect and honor for the dead, but not honor your mother and your fathers? So, nigga, I don't give a damn who mad. I done said worse before. And I'm going to say worse again. Did this Gilly, Charleston White, back and forth, did it start with the Pop Hunter situation? Yep. That's where all this started from. Because I didn't know who Gilly the King was. I just saw the Pop Hunter situation. We done that interview, right? And that's when yeah. Philly banned me. Back then. That's when, we, that's when I first had my problem with Philly. They was hollering about I couldn't come to Philly, what they was going to do. So Gilly the King, or whatever the nigga name is, he jumped in my inbox and said, is there a problem, Goofy? I'll be in Dallas, mm -hmm. and when I see you, I'm going to slap you. And my response was, nigga, you ain't never slapped a nigga who will kill you. So we've been going back and forward. So he hopped in your but, DM. Now he hopped in my DM. Okay. Remember, I screenshot it and sent it to yeah. you. Yeah, you did. I remember. So... When his son, when his son got, uh, I remember being on live when the news broke that day, and, and, and one of my one of my partners, who I consider a partner, Kareem Blitz, out of New York, got on my live, and he was chastening Gilly, saying, "This is what you get. You promote these lyrics. You promote this energy." As a matter of fact, Gilly, when you had King Von and Dirk on y'all podcast and they start singing the songs about smoking Tuka, y'all were dancing to it. Hmm. Y'all were dancing to it. When Pooh Shiesty called home from prison, that nigga was talking big dog talk. They wasn't rebuking that shit. 
when Jay Prince was on there making threats, they didn't check Jay Prince. So, nigga, y'all promote this detrimental shit. So, here I come, nigga. From day one, I've been against it. If your kid die playing gangster, I will laugh. If me and you get into it and your kid die in a car accident, I laugh. If your kid fall out the car to get run over by a truck, I laugh if I don't like you. If me and you get into it and your baby get molested, I make mockery of your baby getting molested. So fuck your baby, nigga. I don't like you or your kids. I'm that kind of nigga. It's no different than the gang banging nigga when they ride through our neighborhoods and shoot these guns, knowing that there's kids in the neighborhood. It's no different when Kobe Bryant got in his helicopter and they said, hey, Kobe, it's not safe for us to fly. And Kobe said, fly anyway and put everybody's life in jeopardy. He didn't, he didn't consider those other people. Nigga, I don't need them sometime. Am I wrong? I want to be wrong sometime when a nigga fucking with me. When a nigga fucking with me, I want to be as wrong as possible. So, nigga, I want to be wrong. Fuck Gilly's son and fuck Gilly. But this is how this came about. I showed that nigga some compassion, my nigga, when his son got killed. You did. You did. I openly showed compassion. And people on, were trying on to say get cheese, me. too. On say cheese. Yeah, I showed compassion. I, I poured my heart out for the man because I put myself in his shoes. Now, I did this openly in front of everybody. S somebody wrote a book, an author, the author of my book. I got a children's book out called Every Neighborhood Needs a Mr. Charleston. Mr. Gaines wrote the book. Mr. Gaines is a former elected official out of Detroit. Out of, I mean, out of Michigan. He used to be a commissioner in Michigan. So he's wrote several books. So... He's a fan of Wallow and Gillies. He's a fan of Charleston White. So by him being a fan of Charleston White and Wallow, he was hoping that he could promote the book to, to Gilly and Wallow and them. So, you know, I, I openly showed compassion, homie. So the dude promoting the book, Mr. Gaines, uh, man, Gilly, Gilly, you know, he got disrespectful. You know, why you working with this dude? Uh, he's a rat. He's a snitch. He ain't never been nothing in his 20s. And I'm saying, nigga, uh, is that how y'all celebrity niggas look at us? Because y'all became celebrities and, and we were single dads or raising our children while you were writing rap lyrics on the road. Nigga, we was at home raising our kids, making right choices where I don't have to snitch. See, I ain't been no criminal, homie. I wasn't no criminal in my 20s. I wasn't no criminal in my 30s. I've never, I, I've never been an adult criminal. So, nigga, so... Uh, I said, well, damn, this how this nigga really feel? Even if we had these feelings in the beginning, homie, when your son died, I went out my way and chastised a friend and told my friend, nah, homie, you wrong. Nigga, you go do this? So, nigga, uh, I take my compassion back. F*** your son. Nigga, as a matter of fact, I hope to are forgiven by God and live a long life of redemption with not losing sleep. I ain't lost one sleep, nigga, over my victim. I've never lost sleep over our victim. So I pray that his killers, nigga, live a long life of redemption and don't lose one ounce of sleep over and cheese. I think Cheese got what he deserved, nigga. Like every gangster who died in the streets, they get what they deserve. Like every gangster go to jail, nigga, they get what they deserve. So who crying for a gangster nigga who got killed? Who feel bad because we making mockery of a gangster who got killed? Ain't this what we do in the black community? We did it with FBG Duck. We did it with Tuka. We did it with King Von. We did it with Nipsey. We did it with Tupac. We did it with Biggie. What make this boy so special when we can't joke about his death? And who made up the rule that you can't talk about dead people? Show me where you can't work. Show me where you ain't supposed to talk about the dead. And then show me where karma is real. 
Well, karma go get you for talking about the dead. I'm still waiting for white people to get their karma for slavery. Slavery lasted 400 years. How long we been out of slavery? And white folks still ain't got their karma. What about the police officer who was rehired for killing Tamir Rice? He ain't got his karma. So I don't believe in karma. And I think you can make fun of the dead and nothing go happen to you. Now, I do want to talk about the, the karma thing because you called your son on live and and a lot of people are, 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 are speaking about, you know, you're giving now you're you're letting energy into your son's life. Now, now people are wishing and they know you got a son, so they want something to bad happen to your son. So it could be a ha ha this and that. Well, why is YMW Melly still alive? If, I, if energy and karma is real, then let me see. Do you get energy and karma for words or for actions? Actions. Actions or words? Actions. Come on now. My son don't rap gangster. My son is not a criminal. My son is not a popular, well-known rapper walking around with jewelry. My son is unrecognizable to the world. What energy gonna come for him? Because his dad said, hey, let me tease this nigga who can't call this son. So if karma and energy is real, what about all the good karma that I'm supposed to get for working with the kids? Why don't nobody ever say, hey, man, you got some good energy coming. You never hear people say that. You never hear people say, hey, You've been taking care of kids for so long, you got some great karma coming. You never heard people say that. So I don't believe karma or energy. Because if energy is, is really real, when do white people get theirs for their hateful energy? All the Karens, all the women who done accused niggas of wrongfully raping them, when do they get theirs? If karma and energy is really real. And why don't people ever say this for doing good? Why is karma always associated with bad? Why? So I don't believe in none of that shit, my nigga. I believe you reaping what you sow. You don't reap in what you say. Because if you really reap energy and karma in what you say, we all be in trouble for the things we say in relationships. We'll all be in trouble for the thing we say to our baby mamas and our baby daddies. We'll all be in trouble for the things we say in the car when we get cut off in road rage. If karma and energy is really real. So I don't believe none of that. I don't think nothing going to happen to my son. So what was Gilly's son karma? What did he do in life? What did Tamir Rice Trayvon Martin, what, was, what karma got them where they at? And when do George Zimmerman get his karma? Think about this. George Zimmerman sold the Skittles and the gun. And George Zimmerman got a lawsuit out against Trayvon Martin and mom and daddy. When do he get his karma? When do the Catholic priests get their karma? For all the molestation that they did. When do the child sex traffickers get their karma? When do the politicians get their karma? Why is karma only for poor people? Because you never hear rich people talk about karma. Because they rob, steal, kill, and destroy. You never hear rich people talk about karma. That's a poor person's concept. And by the way, that's a Buddhist belief. Let, let me ask you this, though, because I, I've seen you get into it with a lot of people. But don't you feel like sometimes, well, everybody you get into it with, do you always got to go below the belt? Yeah. Why? I, I go to below the belt with my wife. If me and my brother argue, nigga, ah, right, that's why your daddy don't come see you, nigga. That's why your grandma on your daddy's side died. I go, listen. I go to below the belt with anybody I have an altercation with. Because, nigga, when the gloves are off, the gloves are off. Who fight with limitations? 
Who put restrictions on, on fighting? Well, man, you no, nah, homie, when we into it, nothing is off limits, even if you my woman. Yeah, that's why your daddy tried to fuck when you was a kid. That's why your daddy would molest you when your sister. Ho got me fucked up. Now I'm a mean motherfucker when we arguing. You better not, man, no, nah, I'm a mean motherfucker. So no, so let me be. Because you already know what kind of mouth I got. So let me be. Now, I mean, multiple people said you're banned from Philly. You I say mean, I'm banned from Philly? Well, they they pe- said that five years ago. And when I went to Philly, I sold out. Yeah, they, everywhere they say I'm banned from. But, nigga, I ain't never been to Philly other than going to do a comedy show in uh, Atlantic City, New Jersey. I don't have a big fan base in Philly. I go where my fans are. I wouldn't go to Utah. I ain't, I ain't shit in Utah for me. I'm a Southern guy. Philly is more segregated than the South. Philly, Philly conditions, if you stay for three days, is depressing conditions. Very depressing. Uh, it's like the walking dead. And that's outside of Kingston. I rode through there. Oh, you're talking, about, look, you're talking about Kensington. Yeah, Kensington. So it's, it's not a vibrant place. I'm a vibrant nigga. I like strip club. Philly ain't got no motherfucking strip club. They got a few of them. Nigga, they ain't got like what we know. It, it ain't like ecstasy and shit like that, nah. That's what I'm saying. So so to come from the South in, such a, in, in a metropolitan area like Dallas, Fort Worth, to go to Philly... You wouldn't want to stay long because just the visual environment, just the, the, the visual of how the environment looks, homie, it looks gloomy. The buildings are old. And I'm saying, I'm saying this when I was there. How can anybody thrive here? Look at these conditions. How can it look at the kids, homie? And, and, and the violence, the violence amongst the youth. <laughs> Is unlike no other. So if that's the case, then the future for Philly doesn't look bright because the children are 100% of the future. So when you look at the condition that these children are born and grow up in, you look at the lack of resources in these conditions, you look at the despair, homie, Who's gonna be who's gonna thrive out of those conditions? Who's gonna make it out of those conditions? So the city don't put back into the infrastructures. When you look at the grassroots organizations, they're not getting a lot of funding for after school. Home, I studied that shit. Remember, I was gonna go back and do trash pickup. Remember, I was gonna partner with Allen Iverson, Big Reed, to come do community work there. So I started studying the conditions. Wallow and Gilly trying to go do prison reform while uplifting gangster codes, rules, and ethics on a podcast in the light. So I'm saying, homie, who got compassion for a nigga whose son got playing gangster, talking gangster, and the daddy still acting gangster? Who got compassion when y'all didn't have no compassion for Miss Dominique, Tuka's mother? So, man, f*** that nigga and anybody who mad about what I'm saying. My tune ain't changed. I've been saying f*** dead rapper nigga kids. I said f*** Nipsey Hussle. I said f*** King Von. Drakey O the Ruler, Slim Four. I've been saying f*** these niggas. Who's surprised about this? And I'm going to say f*** some more. Gillis, I'm gonna say some more dead kids, nigga. I said the kids at the Uvalde school shooting, nigga. I said them kids at Sandy Hook school shooting. Them white kids, them Mexican kids, nigga. Them ain't our babies. 
And he ain't no baby. That's a grown nigga got killed in the streets, nigga. Kill about no grown nigga getting killed in the streets. I care about babies dying. You don't think the power of the tongue is real, though? No. Because if the power of the tongue is real, all that shit my mama been talking about prosperity and, and, and multiplying and she ain't got no rewards and she been paying tithes and all. No, hell no. Hell no, that tongue, the power of the tongue ain't real. Why a nigga can't talk his way into no money then? Nigga be, nigga, I'm, I'm for the hit, boy. I'm, I'm just my year old. Nigga, why a nigga can't talk his way into no money if the power of the tongue is real? That's all I want to know. Why a nigga can't talk his way into success if the power of the tongue is real? That's all I'm saying. So I don't believe in none of that. I believe in you reap what you sow in actions, not you get back what you say. Because you say a lot of shit. People say a lot of shit they don't mean and they don't do. But nigga, I mean every goddamn thing I say. I what mean people, everything I say because I think about the things I say. What did people around you say? Like your mom or maybe Dewberry or there's people in your circle. Do they agree with everything you do? Like, is there somebody in your circle that's like, Charleston, you taking it too far, my nigga? No. Hell no. Is, is that because you don't allow people in your circle that don't agree with you? Like, you like people that agree with everything you do? Or they just, y'all all think alike? Oh, uh, we all think alike. My mother, my mother don't watch social media at all. So she don't know what I say. But she didn't hear me say somebody did. Kids say, son, I'm not supposed to say that. She say what you say. Some, I say, mama, if that's true, then why your ties ain't multiplying? If that's true, so I say, mama, that's y'all belief. Maybe it's multiplying in health. Everything don't got to be money, though. Man, my mama done caught coronavirus seven times. Yo, shut the fuck. <laughs> then my mama had the COVID 19 seven times and she got the vaccine. Shut the fuck up, bro. Nigga, I don't, who want to multiply in health? Don't nobody want to multiply in health the way we eat. We want money. Nigga don't want to be healthy, bro. Nigga rather be unhealthy rich. So, no, nigga, listen, all that fairy tale, Bible, religious, Quran, Buddhist, Torah talk. Homie, listen. The people who live against that shit live longer and better. The people who sin and break rules, don't wash their hands, don't use condoms, sleep with random people, they live a vibrant, healthy motherfucking life with no problems and issues. Say what you want to say, do what you want to do. But homie, I've said worse. Nigga, I wish... R A P E on A S I A N babies. I done said worse. I made a whole song talking about K I L a white man, R A P E a white woman, and a white baby in the head. I made uh, a song. We got, uh, yeah, we got to bleep this out, man. You <laughs> said so now, homie. So I've said worse. Matter of fact, I just lost my Instagram account. They took my Instagram for promoting sex trafficking. Because I said I'm looking for sex. They took my Instagram for that. It said sex, promoting sex trafficking. I've said worse. But nigga, when you look at my actions in life, you can't never hear nobody say what I've done. It's always what he said. So I stand on the fact that actions speak louder than words. I can come online in my character form and say F all the dead people I want, just like the rappers, and cut the phone off and go work in the community and act like I ain't said nothing. Just like the rappers. Yeah, no man. I mean, every like I said, every event on Easter Sunday, would, I mean, especially at my house, you, you were the topic of discussion. Um, every phone call, you know, have you spoke to Charleston? Is he going to apologize? No, he... I'm not going to apologize. I hope, I hope I made his whole family cry with these words. I don't care about hurting no nigga feelings. Don't give a damn about that, my nigga. If we get into it, my nigga, it's on. It's on. 
How'd you get those text messages that you shared, though? The, the promoter sent it to I mean, the, the guy that y'all were partnering with, he sent it to you? He my business partner. Why wouldn't he send it to me? Especially when my nigga done seen me show compassion for him. Why wouldn't my nigga send it to me? And I, I went publicly, nigga. I stood out before the world. And I went against a friend. I stood out before the world and I went against a friend, somebody I respect and admire, and said, nah, homie, you wrong. Let the man make it. I defended him. So why would my nigga come back and share this with me and he saw me do this? Some people say, well, he don't want to upset a friend. I'm the kind of friend, go be mad if you don't upset me, nigga. I'm a, no, nigga, no. This ain't me and my bitch. Now, this ain't got, this me and my, this, this me and another nigga. So if my partner, my friend, my business, yeah, nigga, let me know what this whole ass nigga done said. Hmm. When you read that, I mean, what was that? Was you, was you, was you hurt? Was you angry? Was you disappointed? Did you feel, um, like, what, when you read that Gilly, when he said all that? Oh, I thought to myself, you should have made fun of his son the day he died, nigga. Yeah, 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 you should have you made fun of him that day. That's what you get for showing compassion. I was taught, and I believe, that only the strong can show compassion for the weak. So I was strong, homie, in, in showing him some compassion. And uh, I regretted it. Yeah, yeah, I regretted it. That's why I got so ugly. Yeah, yeah, I was disappointed in myself. Yeah, I should have been mean from the get-go when the son, I should have been mean the time he died. It was, yeah, yeah, yeah. So that's why I went in so hard. Yeah, the, the I was disappointed myself for giving that whole ass nigga some compassion when that bitch ass nigga didn't deserve it. Yeah, the, the Pop Hunter shit was fucked up because he was a kid at the time. But then it's like now if you pay attention, it's a lot of rappers who ratted afterwards and got away with it. And still cool, still getting big interviews, still getting that limelight. But Pop Hunter as a kid, after that came out, everybody shut him off. Homie, what, 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 what they fail to realize is... uh. Be because of what because of that situation, homie, this kid went to the verge of, of almost suicide. Yep. Let, come on, homie. They pushed this man, this kid was at the height of, 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 of his rap career, had won the biggest song with Uzi Vert, Lil Uzi yep. Vert. Yep, Corvette, Corvette. Gilly Nim was the one put that paperwork out. Because he was pop hunter popping and he's and he wasn't a street kid. And they were trying to shame him for talking gangster, put the paperwork out, and Cheese was supposed to blow up. Gilly them did that. So when I didn't know nothing about none of this, I just know the whole rap community was shaming this kid Pop Hunter. I done my first interview with you talking about it. That's what made Gilly threaten me. And nigga threatened me, homie. That nigga threatened to call me bodily harm because I done an interview. Why wouldn't I diss his kid when I showed compassion and mercy for him, even after he threatened me? Talk to me like, like he'll slap me. Nigga, I'll shoot you in your face, nigga. Nigga, you slap me, you'll get wallow shot too. I'm gonna go. I'm gonna, I'm gonna go to the mental hospital, homie, and, and say, "Hey, y'all said I was homicidal and suicidal by ideation and preparation. These nigga playing with me. These nigga playing with me. They threatening me. I'm responding to threats. I, I ain't threatening nobody. I didn't wake up and say, "Hey, Gilly, no, nah, he he disrespecting me. I didn't wake up looking for trouble. I showed compassion, even after he threatened me." I let it go. So, nigga, I got every right to do what I'm doing. I keep telling y'all I'm willing to die and go to jail for the things that come out of my mouth. I, I'm willing to die, kill, and go to jail for this shit I'm saying. Nigga, you don't think I know this shit dangerous? 
How long y'all been saying I'm going to get How long y'all been saying I'm banned? How many long, how long y'all been saying karma go get me? It's been five years now. Nigga hit me sleep in the barbershop, nigga. I'm out on two felony bonds for that. Damn. I'm, I'm out on two felony bonds for that. Nigga, you can't do nothing to me and I not respond. I'm out on two felony bonds for that barbershop incident. Why? I mean, did you chase him or some shit? Oh, uh, I'm out on two felony bonds, nigga. Mm. So if you do something to me, I'm going to do something, nigga. I'm out on two felony bonds. 